Hello. Um, yeah, let's go to the next page. I'd like to say uh, thank, thank, uh, a quick thank you to our sponsors and its supporters. And now if you would like, um, on the toolbar, can you please point out where you are? Let's see where everyone is. Well, use the star. See, I am right there, Wisconsin. Okay, so let's get the show on the road. Yeah, so, my name is Andrew Peterson. I am a junior at University School of Milwaukee. Now, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm not even close to a professional designer. I'm just a high school student that has learned a way to make uh, some money using Photoshop, a program that can be relatively simple yet highly sophisticated. So first, I'll give you a short little story about what got me interested into Photoshop and digital art. I am in love with photography. I first started out on a small little iPhone and then upgraded to my digital camera. But I needed a way to make my I needed a way to make my photos captivating. So I did a little bit of research and downloaded Adobe Lightroom 5. There, uh, Adobe Lightroom 5 is a powerful tool that enhances your photography. Countless times I have changed seamless, seemingly dull photos into captivating works of art. Now I will admit, some of my creations when I first started out were a little bit dumb and silly, but it helped me figure out how to use tools and the layout for the software. When I first got my computer and downloaded Photoshop on it, I, I just played around with the brushes and the, the certain effects and gradually I was able to make some interesting new creations. This was one of the first ones I've created. It was originally a picture of my friend's eye, which I distorted into an interesting abstract. Then, with this, I tried to make sort of a double exposure with taking the background forest and putting the silhouette of the children on top of it. The messing around with, with, with the blending layers and the opacity, I got this. Now, originally, I found this on the internet, and I was very curious on how one can make it in Photoshop. So I put the pictures of the mechanical calculator and the Nike shoe together, and then messed with the blending options on the Nike shoe. And then, to, to make the, the picture a little bit better for, for the viewer, I, had, I messed around with the levels and the contrast, so you could see the in, uh, inside of the calculator. Now this is one of the most, this creation, I was, it was just out of sheer boredom. I wanted to make a cool background for my computer, so I tried to make it that of something that you would say, see inside of a, recru a, a recording studio. So I had to create each bar and just adjust it into each certain location, then put them together by merging the layers. I duplicated it and then flipped it vertically. Transformed, uh, I transformed the duplicated version uh, and change, change the perspective and mask the bottom just to give it a little bit of a, a reflection effect. When I went to the, then I went back to the first layer and gave it the red outer glow. By doing that, all you have to do is just go to the blending options and set the outer glow. It's rather simple. Now, I know that I am not the best and I am still constantly in search for new tutorials to help me enhance my knowledge, but I know that I would not be where I am today without just practicing on those silly creations. Now, what has really helped me along the way is tutorials. I cannot stress enough how, how helpful these are. Two, out of this, two in particular out of this list is tutsplus.com and YouTube. When I was first beginning tutsplus.com, it gave me um, a level of difficulty and a rough estimate of time on how long it would take me. At, at this time, I was still unsure of my capabilities and it provided a more concise version of how each, pro how each process affected that photo and explained in great detail on how I could get to that point. Now when it comes to YouTube, there are thousands of tutorials online. I spent countless hours uh, perusing through different lists of helpful, tutorial, of helpful YouTube tutorials under the search topic, fun, fun Photoshop tutorials. 
that easy. Now my most rewarding tutorial I have ever done, I took this picture of ancient ruins and turned it into a dazzling oasis. It taught me how to, how to use the masking layers. On the side, there is a second white symbol where you, can, um, where you can use the erase tool to safely remove content from that current layer. If you erase content from an unmasked layer, then it does permanent damage to the photo on that layer. Rather, if you mask it, you get the content back immediately just by using the inverted color that you used to erase it. So for example, say I would, um, on the upper right-hand corner, there's my layers palette. Uh, on the second layer down, you see sort of a black and white little um, can canvas, or not, well, layer. So how I would mask it, I would use the eraser tool. I would have it set to black and then erase whatever I do not want. But if I accidentally erase something I do want, I would press the shortcut X on my computer to change it back to white and then, and then move the erase tool over and get it back. Now, with my new set of skills, I thought to myself, how can this help me in the classroom and how can I get a better grade? So, for one of, so I enrolled in my school's digital art program. For one of my projects, I was tasked with creating a record label for, e for either a fictional or non-fictional band. I chose to make the background of the album cover this stunning picture of a lake and a mountain, but I had to alter it in Photoshop in some way. Using tricks that I've learned from past projects and playing around with the different effects that Photoshop has to offer, I was able to make a picture of this stunning mountain into a striking and dramatic album cover. For this photo in particular, I used three RGB lighting effects to get the right aesthetics for the album cover. This is the final product after some minor tweaking with the RGB lighting locations. As you can see in this picture, I changed the middle of the mountain to more to a more vibrant red instead of the blue and white that I, that, for I found that it gave the album slightly more color. My favorite project that I have done um, definitely had to be my morph project. My classmates and I were assigned to transform an object into either an animal or anything else we could possibly imagine. I chose to morph Bill Murray into a fierce lion, of course. What helped me most on this project was my understanding of masking, which I learned previously while following the dazzling Oasis tutorial. In each project that, that I create, there are always small little ideas that pop, pop up into my head, going like, oh, this is so cool, why don't we try this out? Each little idea is first tested, but if found not to be beneficial towards the final product, I disable or hide the layer by clicking on the small eye icon next to the thimble, keeping it just in case. What this tutorial also taught me well, was, here, let me see, was as the final product, the face of Bill Murray, the face of Bill Murray morphed as a lion is much more appealing than the previous as it has a more cohesive feel along a more vibrant background. So even just adding another layer of what it acts, what it looks like can add even, can add an even, I'm stumbling on my words, sorry, can add an even better effect. Now for my school's House of Technology logo, I, de I decided to help the House of Tech, a student-run technology support program, which I'm also a part of, by rehauling their logo from an original painted version to an online digital copy. Now, here's one of my favorite teammates that helped me out with my final project for digital art. For this project, I had to create a cartoon rendition for someone that I personally know. To get this completed, I had to use both Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. First, in Photoshop, I had to manipulate his face using filters to create certain guide patterns for the pen tool in Illustrator. For each different layer, there had to be a new guide pattern that I had to follow along with uh, a different co color. In the final product, my friend was transformed into a cartoonish explosion of colors. Now, how, here's just how I got this into the un entrepreneurial shit. So several months ago, my father, a political consultant, had to create a billboard for the sheriff running for office within a short amount of time. I offered to help him, of course. 
Since completing that project, I have been hired for additional work that requires graphic design skills in a variety of different areas, ranging from political ads to logos for various organizations. I've also been tasked with creating short YouTube videos for Ado uh, using Adobe Premiere Pro by various clients. I got into creating specific designs tailored for different organizations and political campaigns throughout the greater Milwaukee area because I needed to raise money for myself. For quite a long time, I have been a very large techie and was interested in purchasing parts and building my own computer, but without a job, I had to look somewhere else for income. This was my first project and rather a simple one. I was told to, cre to create an ad that would be placed on several billboards throughout the city. The most difficult part of this ad was to I uh, had to be getting the correct picture that portrayed the sheriff as the man he is without saying many words within the ad. And uh, as, an, as another example, here is a logo that I was hired to create for a statewide legislative criminal justice reform initiative. I had to somehow incorporate the capital into, into the logo itself, but it had to be in a creative way. For the logo, I, mo I modeled it after my first digital art class project, where we had to split the picture and insert whatever we wanted inside to create a certain effect. Now you may be wondering how I build my clients. It mostly changes job to job. Well, um, when it came to creating the YouTube videos, however, those generally took more time than a small logo or ad, so I charged a greater amount. It also depends on what the client needs. If I need to learn new techniques for the design, that clearly requires more time and research. If I already know how to complete the project and it is a simple one, then there is no need to charge a greater amount. I'll just add a quick summary. One thing that I need to stress is that you should never ever stop reading, never stop checking YouTube or for tutorials and tips and tricks. Watch as many videos as you can. Check as many design blogs as you can. Find something that you enjoy and embrace it and make money from it. Do anything that you want. And now I'll open up to some questions. Um, that's actually a pretty good question. I also use Adobe Illustrator, Premiere Pro, um, and InDesign. For each one, it does a different thing. For in InDesign, it is mostly text-based. So say I can make like a menu, I can make a newspaper. When it comes to Illustrator, it is vector-based, while Photoshop is all pixel-based. So uh, if you want to make a logo, um, it would be better to use it in Illustrator because then you can blow it up as, as large as you want it and it'll still look exactly the same. However, if you use Photoshop and you make it huge, you'll see all the pixels and it won't look as good. Any more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Well, if there aren't any more questions, then, well, it's open. <laughs> if not, then have a good e evening. Thank you for stopping by.